All right, it's a new day, and we are back on the C4500 project. So, the next step in this process is we need to mount the subassembly to the truck. When you order a subassembly, they're not always cut to the right length. They're kind of this subassembly fits from this size to this size dump bed. So, sometimes you got to cut them off. So, that is the case of mine. It's going to be I'm going to have to cut a little bit off. I think it's like 9 inches or something. I have to cut off the front. So what I'm doing is laying this all out now to figure it all out. And I'm going to get the grate all. <clears throat> go pick it up and set it in place and do my measurements with the subassembly setting on top. That way I can get the right spacing I want and so on. But I'll quit talking and just show you. Alright, so the back of this, they want you to drill a hole through the top of the frame and bolt this in. Um... So I have to compensate for that, and I have that one inch, or that half inch plate here, or five eighths, whatever it is, here. So I have to set that bolt hole back this far. If I would have had more frame, I could have set the bolt past the hitch plate, but there just wasn't enough frame. You can see how tight that ended up being. So I have to compensate for that, which means i got to shorten this up a little more. Not really the end of the world when you have an uh, electrical or hydraulic hoist, which is what this is going to be. We're going to have slightly more overhang than most um, dump trucks would have. Our bed is 10 foot 6, so we'll be hanging over from here about 7, 8 inches, something like that, because we'll put a gap up here in the front. So I printed off their diagram here. It tells you where they want you to place each one of these brackets. This one's supposed to go underneath the hoist at 69 inches. Oh, well, it says centered on the hoist is how they've got it set up. So if I centered it in the hoist, there's no way I can weld under there. I mean, this is hanging down, you know, at the bottom. So that's impossible. So I'd have to cut this off, which I don't think that's the end of the world, but just kind of odd placement to me. I mean, this is the um, instruction sheet for this one. It's a CS615T-11, uh, which is what this is, 615T-11 foot. So it also tells you up here to put this up here. Now, mind you, I've had to slide this forward because there wasn't enough frame back here. Okay, so... Um, if I, if I try and use the brackets that they, sh they ship and put this one right where I measured it out, um, it ends up right on these rivets, which, you know, you would think would be great, but, you know, it's off. You can see how, how far off it is. Maybe this will show up better, but you can see it's way off. So, I'm not going to oval that hole out. They also specify that they want a continuous half inch weld here and here to the hoist the sub assembly um, and the same thing over here it, it doesn't work if I try and put it where they want it um, centered on you know the pin here if I try to put this in place there's a bolt right there I would have to gouge out so much of this that this would be thin and I'd worry about it cracking. So I think I this is just quarter material bent at 90. Um, I'm and they again they want this continuous weld is what their instruction sheet says. Half inch continuous weld down here to here. Well there's just no way I can weld in there. It's I'd have to cut this off. It seems like unless I'm missing something, there's just really bad planning there. So what I'm thinking about doing is I have a couple of, I have a piece of material that's quarter inch thick and it is the same uh, distance here 
on this side because it needs to go into the side here so you can weld it. Um, I have this. I have some of this, only it's in like a frame. One of the liners I had made for Justin's uh, um, ambulance that the guy didn't bend them proper. They didn't fit. So I could probably take that and make these brackets over again. And it wouldn't be as steep of a bend, so they probably would be less likely to crack. That's a pretty harsh bend right there. I'm sure it's adequate, or they wouldn't send it, but what I have would be just a little bit uh, softer of a bend, more uh, conforming to this. But uh, let me go get it, I'll show you. All right, so here's what I had bent, and it just really didn't work, the size was off. But it's quarter plate just like this, and I could easily set that right there and slice, slice off a section that we need, you know, this size or bigger or whatever, and, you know, make it to where it works with what we're doing. So this is the mount that I've made. The mount they had was obviously smaller, but uh, they had it to where it was spread across like this. And I'm going to be pulling out of these two mounts, so I just added two more here. So what I've done is drilled these, and I just marked these in the paint. So now I'm just going to use an annular cutter and the mag drill and cut these two out. Okay, so this row of bolts here does nothing but sandwich the double frame together there's no cross member here it's back in this area so these two holes are half inch bolts these are 5 8 bolts so I'm happy with how it turned out I'm happy with how tight it fits to the frame on both sides we got a little bit more of a radius here than a real sharp one which will make this maybe slightly stronger than the one that was bent real tight so I think we're gonna go with this and I'll just trace this for the other one and make it again all right this side is ready to go as well so now i have two more brackets for the front which i've already cut them i just need to get them cleaned up and get the holes drilled these will be for the front 
They're a little bit longer than the other ones. The other ones were only going to grab um, one of these rivet holes, and I'm going to try and get both of them, get two of them anyways. Let's see how it goes. So I took the rivets out here. I ground the heads down, and I tried to hit it with an air hammer, and it wouldn't come out. So I took my uh, mag drill with the annular cutter, and I just drilled the center of the uh, rivet out. It was going good, and on the bottom one, somehow I got off slightly, and when it grabbed a hold of the frame, it broke my bit, so I have to get another one. So, But anyways, my bracket fits nice. It's nice and flat here, nice and flat here, so I'm pleased with that. Now I just have the one on that side to do, which I guess I'll just have to grind it flat, and uh, I'll drill a hole in the center, and then try and push it out with an air hammer. On my last two coats on this side, a lot of guys ask me, what paint we use and it's nothing special i just use a uh, rust-oleum rusty metal primer and you know rust-oleum spray can paint um when i'm doing truck frames it's the same thing i use uh i use a rusty metal primer of course i didn't do this one we paid a guy to do it but normally i use a rusty metal primer and then i use uh rust-oleum uh, acrylic enamel with a hardener and it seems to do really well but again we didn't do this one so now I have the sub-assembly suspended and I have marked out where I want to drill my holes for these rear mounts. So I'm going to go ahead and drill them out real quick. Went ahead and drill the holes. I hit them with primer and paint so we can, you know, hopefully slow down any rust that might start there. So now once that paint dries, we're ready to set this down in place. Now this isn't going to be the final time. This is just... Uh, fitting so i'm struggling with whether i should put the fuel tanks in next or this but i have a couple other things to do so i've been waiting on putting the fuel tanks back in and everything back together until i've done drilling on the frame because getting access into here you know is easy right now because there's nothing there so you see how this hinge is made here and how much space this takes so before i can uh set that down onto here and bolt in place i got to get this cross member back in because afterwards i won't be able to get bolts in so i need to go get some half inch bolts not very thick you only got to go through about less than half inch material i think but i need two four six eight and then i have to bolt that back in as well that one might be interesting because the bolt heads that are factory are pretty tall and they may hit the bottom of this and I don't want to have to drill holes to make that fit sit flat. So I may have to do something different here with different bolts. And that's okay. Not a big deal. All right. took me a little while. But I was able to find bolts that were low enough head and allow me to get a washer in there and still be underneath that plane. So now we can move forward. I think we need to put the fuel tanks back in, at least this rear one, because it's kind of a pickle getting the lines up in here. And I'd rather do that with this out of the way because it's going to get tight where the sending unit is. Man, maybe not, but it might be better to do it now. All right, so my brackets are finished. I got all my hardware in, uh, the flat washers, lock washers, all that kind of stuff on both sides. So next step was I cut that bracket off because it's going to be in our way, and then I ground down all the paint so we're nice and smooth here and on the insides as well. So the next thing we're going to do is set the sub-assembly down into place. We'll C-clamp it in these two spots, both sides, and then bolt it in the rear into place. Then we're going to weld it. But I'm going to stop. I'm going to end the video here because the next step is we're going to be using this new welder that Yes Welder has sent me to try. This is the Firstus MP200. Um, kind of nice machine here. It's, it's a multifunction power unit. It's MIG, TIG, um, MIG, TIG. MIG. Uh, that's going to be gas shielded, TIG, flux core, MIG, uh, and a plasma cutter all in one. So turn around here, check out the screen. So much better than uh, the old one. This thing is actually set up. It's really pretty easy to use. I've been using a little bit around here, doing a little bit of welding, a little bit of plasma cutting. So you go to the home screen. This is so easy to use. Now check this out. Go to MIG. That's MIG with shielding gas. That is 
made with flux core, lift TIG, plasma cutter, and then the settings. You can go into settings if you want to be in um, inches, in English, metric, or back to factory specs. We'll stay an inch. Okay. Now we'll go back to home. We're going to be doing uh, shielded gas MIG. And what's really cool about this is check this out. You can start to adjust what gas you want to use. All right, let's say we want to use gas. Push this button again. Uh, I'm going to use, I use an 80-20 argon mix. The steel wire we're using, you choose what diameter or what wire it is, steel or stainless, my mistake. Then you can, once you say your steel, you change 30 or 35, we take 35. Two touch or four touch, um, that's, from what I understand, that's if you pull the trigger once, uh, it'll weld the whole time. As long as you're holding the trigger, as soon as you let up, it stops welding. If you use the 4T, which is what it's set at now, you pull the trigger once, it keeps welding, you can let off the trigger. You pull the trigger again, as soon as you let off, it shuts off. But we want 2T. So we'll set that. Then you can go to your thickness of metal. Bring that up. And let's see, we're doing probably quarter inch plate. And... Then you can get into your burn back and then say you want to do your burn back you can adjust that with your with your seconds around here zero to ten and then once that's set you can go here if you want to set it in memory after you've done all that as soon as you're done just don't touch anything then the highlight will stop okay now you can adjust your voltage here or you can adjust your amperage over here which changes your feet per second but anyways we'll get into this some more but i'm going to end the video here because i've been using this thing a little bit and i'm going to use it for doing the welding here uh, as soon as i do a few more tests on some other materials so i can get it as close as i want but it, it comes with the mig torch uh, the mig gun the tig torch and the plasma gun plasma torch whatever you call it it does not come with a flow meter for the for your gas, your shielding gas. It comes with a uh, uh, regulator for the plasma. And you have to assemble some of this, but I'll show you in a video. But uh, anyways, we'll pick this up later. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm probably just going to go to this machine and then go ahead and give away the other one and learn to TIG with this one because I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me. And the price point on this, I, their preliminary numbers on it, I think were extremely reasonable for what it is for an import welder. For what it is, 5.5 five process, is that right? Uh, flux core MIG, gas MIG, um, stick, TIG, and plasma. Yeah, 5.5 five, five process. Anyways, that's the end of this one. Next time we'll be welding and using this, so... Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll catch you on the next one.